welcome to My Smart Tech TV. My name is Jess Bainridge and I'm your host. And today I'm joined by Shua Wang, who's the co-founder and CRO at Deal, and Shannon Karaka, who's the head of expansion for Australia and New Zealand at Deal. So welcome to both of you. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us here today. Fantastic. Now, Deal was started in 2019, and I read online that it didn't take long for you to have more than 500 employees in over 60 countries with a revenue that boomed from 4 million in 2020 to more than 50 million in 2021. So first of all, a huge congratulations on that success. I'm really keen to hear the Deal story. Tell me how the company came to be, and I suppose the challenge that you are solving in society. And uh, Shah, I might start off with you on that. Sure, sounds good. Sounds good. So uh, we we started the the, the company in our early two thousand nineteen. Okay. Uh, I always wanted to to build a fintech uh, platform to to uh, try software, and then um, my co founder Alex and myself we met at school at MIT. We're good friends, right? And then uh, we have like all both of us have very international background. We traveled a lot. Like you know, I was born in China. He was born in France, and then we end up in. The states and study study uh, in uni together right and then we realized that you know how uh talents are global right and then people can 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 hire like you know uh talents internationally and then people can work together even though they're not in the same location we're not from the same country especially like you know with the 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 advancement of technology and then how like you know people tend to travel more people tend to like you know uh work from home if they can instead of like you know working in, in an office and even if even when like you know people in the same building in the same room they still like communicate online right so using zoom using slack it is very common like you know uh, right now if they have a meeting everyone is, is, is virtual right so but that the, this whole trend started actually in in 2017 2018 right so i think at alex and myself we, we, we see this trend and we understand like you know talents is everywhere we have more access to like international talents and then at that time, we also worked with international talents, and we definitely have this problem, like you know, sending over payments, and then understand the compliance, and then figure out the local labor laws, the paperwork, and when it comes to hire those inter international talents, right? And then we just come up with this idea at the very beginning, saying that like you know, hey, we want to uh, work on, on a international payment platform for international independent contractors to start with, right? And then we use that idea, uh, apply the Y Combinator, and then uh, we launched the product in, 2000, uh, in March, 2019, yeah. Amazing. Um, and it's incredible you mentioned it started happening even before um, the pandemic hit, but obviously there's been an even more huge you know, surge uh, in remote working over the past years. Um, and, and companies definitely aren't going back to the ways that they were before. And I read that um, in May 2021, a Mercer study found that 70% of companies say that they were planning to adopt a hybrid model. Um, and many uh, companies have already made that switch. Uh, huge brands like Adobe, Salesforce, Spotify, and Twitter. Um, and the Microsoft Work Trend Index, published in March 2021, found that 66% of employers around the world are redesigning their workplaces to accommodate hybrid work arrangements. So you mentioned it a little bit of it there, but I'm keen to understand more how Deal supports this. And Shannon, I might throw that one over to you. Yeah, that, thank you for the question. I think that's an interesting, uh, interesting one because I, when, when COVID began, I was working for WeWork. And so I witnessed firsthand uh, the transformation and, and the change with companies shifting from working in the office nine to five to adopting a remote and hybrid approach and you know working uh, at WeWork during a, a pandemic wasn't easy commercial real estate was the last thing on on you know founders and, and companies minds are looking to save and reduce operational costs uh, but I think with yeah the inception of COVID we've been forced into a position where uh, we've had to work from home and technology has really been an enabler for us to do that and I think looking at deal as, as an organization and our value proposition to make worldwide workforce a reality, um, with the, the challenges and the struggles that COVID has brought with it, uh, creates opportunity. And I think uh, Shua and Alex uh, 
you know, I had a great and fantastic idea back in 2019 and uh, coincidentally COVID's happened and that's definitely accelerated our trajectory and speaking to the struggles and the challenges that companies and organisations have faced over the past two years with border restrictions and it's been commonly spoken about the tech talent shortage here and I think um, what we do here at Deal is we provide a solution that allows companies to adapt and evolve in, in this uncertain period in time. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been quite the journey so far. I can speak to um, over the past seven months, we've grown the team exponentially uh, in Australia and New Zealand, and there's a lot more work to do. Uh, I feel like I've uh, adopted a, a recruitment a head of a recruitment title here in a, here in Australia, trying to trying to keep up. But uh, but yeah, uh, those are my thoughts anyway. <laughs> Great. Well, apparently so this year is going to be um, a lot of talent flooding the market, so I'm sure you guys will get pretty lucky with with that as well. Um, you mentioned obviously um, how it's impacted different businesses. Can you give me some case studies around some ways that you know, or some businesses that you have impacted and how you've helped them? And sure, I'll throw back to you for that one. Um, I, I think that the, the well, well, impacting businesses is definitely um, a very uh, uh, one of the values that we, we have uh, we, we have produced a, a deal, right? So, but I, I think the for me the, the 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 highest value that I see is actually creating opportunities for like you know the the international talents or the, the global workforce, right? And then, then like you know our mission is definitely create like you know millions of job opportunities like cross-border or globally right if not hundreds of millions right so if we can be hundreds of millions that that, that will be that will be huge right so the, the the value of like you know we create uh opportunities globally is we can help like you know uh uh talents from different countries get in touch with like you know first hand in like you know more advanced technology or more advanced like a product design more advanced like you know platform like you know other other other, other side of the world are using right so and then they they can see the update that they can they like you know they, they can communicate with each other right and then people will be able to work from uh, this different perspective right so the, this kind of like you know uh, talents or creativity or like you know the, the, the product that like you know this group of people that get together can 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 deliver it I, I think is is huge huge asset for, for the entire society or the world. Yeah, it's not only like, you know, uh, helping the businesses, but also like, you know, helping the the, the, the global workforce. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And are there certain sectors that you mainly find use this platform or has it been pretty broad? Uh, <laughs> like is in, yeah, that's a pretty Shannon. <laughs> you know what? Um, I think the, the challenges that we're looking to solve aren't industry specific mm. or aren't sector specific or segment specific. Naturally, uh, you know, we are quite popular with all of the technology companies because they've embraced the, the hybrid and remote working models. Typically, they're scaling quickly. They've got, you know, operations across multiple jurisdictions. Um, they deploy remote tech teams um, and that ties into what we do, um, but you know, I've seen a variety of, of organizations from small to medium business through to enterprise across all of the sectors. You know, we're working with a beverage company here in Australia, we're working with a e-bike manufacturer, but then we're also working with a lot of SaaS and computer software vendors as well. So I think, yeah, you know, talent shortages is one thing and all companies are, are struggling with that at the moment. Mm -hmm. The other narrative that I think we tie into and play into a little bit is uh, the great resignation where we've been struggling um, with not being able to travel here in Australia and New Zealand for two years and employees want more flexibility and companies we've seen the likes of Atlassian and Deloitte adopt a remote work uh, policy and, and team anywhere and in theory, these things and these policies are amazing, but in practice, they're a little bit more difficult to, to execute. Uh, so I think, um, I think yeah, uh, this definitely ties into what we do here, but um, there's a variety of, of use cases that are continuing to evolve as well. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Absolutely. Obviously. Mm. And you, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, when you talk about those, um, it's great to have a business without boundaries as in globally, but you do need to put those structures in place, I suppose. Mm. Well, what are some of the challenges that you've come across uh, in the last couple of years with the business and how have you solved those? Um, sure, I'll, I'll pass to you again. Definitely yeah. Well. <laughs> so I, I think I think one of the challenge I, I I can I can share two right so 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 number one is we we have a, like you know really a good huge market demand right and then and then at the very beginning uh, we were not like you know available in many countries right so we cannot support for example hiring in Uganda where like you know we cannot support hiring in, in in Japan for example right and then one of the biggest challenges is that you know we need to come up with a solution on how we can open deal entities and then be able to support in uh, those many countries right and then so I think we have been moving very fast at the, at the beginning of uh, 2021, January, I remember we, we were only uh, able to support like five countries. But at the end of like, you know, 2021 today, uh, we, we are live in, in 80 plus countries already, right? So in 2022, like, you know, we definitely aim to be live in 100 plus countries. Like, so the more countries that we open, the more uh, like, you know, support we'll be able to provide to our clients, right? So, and then, uh, they, they will be able to to hire easily in those tough countries. That, that that's number one. And I think another challenge is uh, we we always aim to provide like you know high standard and the professional like uh, services and then uh, uh, and then, and the support as well, right? So last year uh, was like you know our huge uh, like your growth like you know from 5.5 million uh, in January to to uh, I, I mean formally in January to 50 million uh, at the end of uh, December right so that, that 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 is exponential growth for us right so and then we underestimated uh, the, the growth so that you know we we start to hire a lot more like you know uh, uh, support team where like uh, uh, customer success team is to maintain our high level of professional services, right? Mm -hmm. And then we also, uh, other than those two two teams, we also like, you know, created a specialized, like, you know, localized uh, employee experience team to help like uh, the, the employees who are getting paid on you, who are employed on deal, like, you know, to, to become their like a personal HR or dedicated HR, whenever they have a local problem, they can reach out to those teams, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, it's, um yeah, it's an incredible company. And what I love is that it kind of puts a really nice positive spin on, I think some people are thinking the great resignation, it's something to be feared, but what you guys are doing is incredible because you're unlocking all of that global talent that we don't even know is probably out there. Um, you mentioned there that one of the goals this year is to be in over 100 countries. Any other big goals on the agenda? Shannon, I'll, I'll start with you and then I'll... Uh, yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> I, think, yeah. <laughs> I think I've got some personal goals. Yeah. Um, and obviously some some revenue goals that we're looking to hit here. So that's one. But, uh, you know, we've been able to create a, a really great team and culture which isn't easy when you're building a team remotely. Um, and I think we've been very fortunate with our recruitment and, uh, and a, a lot of the candidates we've hired up until this point, to be honest with you, have been through referrals. So, um, you know, my goal for this year is hopefully to maintain that and to continue to build an amazing team here um, to better serve the clients that, that, that we're dealing with on, on a database uh, basis. It's not easy, of course, uh, working remotely, but I, credit to all of the hard work that the team's put in uh, up until this point um and yeah uh we're gearing up for a big year next year uh we've got some things in the works uh here at deal as an organization so provided all goes well hopefully um hopefully that comes to fruition no that's what i'll say yeah okay. and do you have any tips you say that you've been able to foster that kind of great work remotely culture any tips for any companies listening that potentially have, have worked well for you <laughs> i say I, I i'm the type of person that's quite family oriented i i came from a, a big family growing up or quite humble uh upbringing and i think uh i embody that as a person and everyone that i interview and engage with um shares the same values and, and traits um so i think that's one thing you know especially when you're working remotely to create a family oriented culture you spend a lot of time with these people um i spend more time with my team than i do with my own family so in a way they are an extension of 
of my family. And, uh, and I think setting that sort of tone uh, from the start is important. You know, culture is, is top down, but it, it's very much bottom up. And it's something that you need to continually uh, work at. Uh, so uh, as an organization, as a team here, we, we regularly have culture sessions uh, to help identify what is our culture and what are our values here as a team and what we are, what, why do we do what we do? Um, so I think that's important. Um, I think leading from the front as well. Uh, I wouldn't ever ask someone to do something that I wouldn't do myself. So I remember my first day uh, at Deal many, many months ago, I, um, I was cold calling on my first day. I didn't know anything about Deal as an organization, but I was so excited to join. I jumped on the phone and started cold calling. And then I think, uh, you know, that example, I've been able to maintain that with my team and some of them don't like the fact that I forced them to cold call with me. <laughs> but you <laughs> do it as well. So it's, yeah. Because I'm doing it yeah. and from the front. They go, oh, Shannon's doing it. Um, and he wouldn't ask us to do something he wouldn't do himself. So yeah. those are some quick tips and tricks. But yeah, I'm, I'm by no means an expert. I'm, I'm learning as well. So maybe Shro, <laughs> Shro, Shro's got some... Uh, some uh, words of wisdom for, for, for the viewers and listeners. Over to you. <laughs> oh, oh my God, yes. Um, yeah, I think, I, think, uh, uh, I think that there are like, you know, eight uh, principles that we value at the deal. Um, I think uh, uh, number one uh, is caring, right? So caring for your clients, caring for your team, like, you know, we always support each other, especially when you are a remote team, right? So you're not physically in one place and then everyone is online. Like, you know, we, we need to make everyone to feel like, hey, you know, we're here for you, even though you, you are working alone by yourself at home, but the, the thing is when, that there are a lot of teammates surrounding you, right? And then we always put uh, our clients, uh, like, you know, uh, requests, suggestions, and then uh, feedback as, as priority so that, you know, just because of their uh, great feedback and then uh, their, their product request, we, we were able to develop the product in the way that they really like, right? And then they, they love to use and then can really uh, help them and be bad, uh, uh, benefits them, right? So I think that's number one. Number two is uh, there's another thing that we call is is deal speed, right? So how, how fast do we execute? Like, you know, we always uh, like, you know, uh, get together, uh, we see a problem, we identify uh, the, 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 the cause of the problem, we come up with like, you know, several different solutions and then we try different solutions for a, a bit and then we identify the best solution to tackle this problem and then we work together as a team to, to solve this problem, right? So I, I think that this deal speed and the, this fast execution, uh, like, you know, um, made us to, to uh, grow this fast today. Yeah. Mm, that's great. Well, congratulations again. Well, I know that um, one of the key challenges of a company that can grow quite fast is often culture. So the fact that you've managed to maintain and create and foster a fantastic culture is a real kudos to you as well. Um, yeah, thanks for joining. A final question. Um, how do people find out more who are listening? What's the call to action? Sure. Um, well, for for applying to deal, where... yeah, just ha yeah. How do they find out more? How do they get involved? If they want to learn more about the business, is the website the best place to go to? Yeah, yeah. The, the website is the best place to go to, and we're very active on LinkedIn and Twitter as well. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I'll link all that in the show notes as well. Any, if I missed anything that you want to cover, we're a hiring. <laughs> hiring. Okay, yeah. awesome. Very aggressively. Okay. Like, okay. You know, that's a that's a good one we are recruiting like crazy so if you are interested in joining a super hyper growth uh amazing fun startup or we'll scale up now <laughs> um yeah shoot me a note shoot me nice. a note um yeah. we're always looking for amazing people to to join the org so well yeah. after listening to this interview how could they resist because yeah it's a fantastic <laughs> company thanks again i appreciate your time and yeah we'll link everything in the show yeah. notes and good luck with everything Thank you, Jessica. Right. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.